please uh, give us any uh, response in the chat area. We'll be monitoring that. Uh, and they're just going to move forward from here. Thank you. Good morning. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to be with us this morning. We're having beautiful weather here in Flagstaff on Northern Arizona University campus, home of the Lumberjack. Mm -hmm. Before I go any further, I'd like to share a couple of thoughts regarding our new training in TA Center, and that is we'd like to know whether you have had the chance and opportunity to review the material that we have emailed out as well as visiting our website. It does provide information regarding the purpose, the method, the expectation of this new training in TA Center. Um, and in regards to this particular activity this morning, the community of practice, some of you folks may have engaged in this type of training and in exchange of information, um, strategies, so forth. So this may not necessarily be new to you. Uh, the community of practice, from our perspective, is an opportunity for the tribal VR programs to exchange ideas, to share your experiences, contribute to the discussion in resolving common problems that you may be encountering in the implementation of providing services for our tribal members with disability. This is an, a, a good forum to use to have a discussion among uh, the peers, meaning the programs, as well as having you share with us what you feel uh, is important regarding program evaluation. Good morning. Um, welcome. And thank you, John, for that lovely introduction. This morning, um, I would like to chat with you about what is the importance of the community of practice and what is the benefit, um, what is the reason, what are the impacts and what makes the difference. We presented um, a PowerPoint on Thursday and today it gives us the opportunity to talk about it, to expand our ideas and to answer any of the questions that you may have. One of the first things that Lee and I thought about when we were um, chatting this morning was what is it about, what is your experience um, with your current evaluation plan? Every one of you had to write a proposal or you had a grant writer write a proposal with your agreement into how you were going to evaluate your program. So how are you using it? How do you, is it working for you? Do you look at it from time to time? Do you have staff meetings? Do you create a retreat where you can talk about it? Do you have an advisory committee? I'm asking a lot of questions at one time and probably too many. So let's just go back to the premise, so the, the, the base. What is your experience in using your current evaluation plan? Do we have any, any people willing to share from their programs? I know some of you are really great. Some of you do, have not done external evaluations until recently and been running programs for a long time, running a program for a long time. So what are those self-evaluation um, tools, mechanisms? The coffee cafe? <laughs> are we getting any responses, John? It's hard for me to see. OK. So maybe uh, do we go back to it and do we explore some other questions? There might be other questions that people might want to answer. While you're gathering your thoughts and typing your responses or questions, um, I'd like to know if there are any particular questions in reference to the 
first webinar on program evaluation. Are there any questions, comments, any observations you'd like to share with us in reference to the first webinar on program evaluation? And if you had the opportunity to download the material that is available or that was available as part of the presentation last week. We have uh, Mark Espino. Mm -hmm. He said uh, external, eva external evaluations have been conducted and are highly effective. Um, that was a statement. And then Carol asked if this was verbally interactive. Um, uh, and I'll say that we can try. Sure. Oh, sure. yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. So, Carol, if you have a microphone um, on your laptop, uh, I just enable the ability for you to talk. If you want to say something, uh, we can just share with the group. group. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Uh, Tom Cyrus is on, and he says, good morning. I wasn't able to attend the last session live. I did watch it on YouTube. Can we get the downloads via email? And I'll forward him the email that I sent everybody else. OK. Is he hearing that when you're talking? Uh, he should be. OK, good. And then Carol says, I am not at my computer. I'm traveling at the School for the Blind. So I'll disable the microphone. Uh, at this point, Carol, if, you, if there's any questions, please put it into the chat area, and we'll address it from there. Um, if she puts some key things in, uh, key words, Carol, if you put some key words in, um, perhaps I could um, embellish some of the things that you're saying and it would be recorded. Um, you have extensive uh, experience doing in-house evaluations. Um, you've done the coffee cafe, I, I know that. Is there anything else that you wanted to share? You do surveys at the end of the year with your consumers and stakeholders. Is she responding? Uh, Carol said OK, and then she said that she was talking and realized nobody was listening uh, oh. <laughs> earlier uh, with a smiling face, too. So she <laughs> um, and Donna asked, uh, was there another webinar last Thursday? And yes, there was. Um, materials that we had were just the PDF of the PowerPoint. So mm -hmm. I'll send that off to you, Donna. And also, Tom, I'll send it off to you right now. Uh, Nora comes in, and she states, we are still in the planning stages. The plan has not been approved by the council, nor did I participate in the grant writing process. Mm -hmm. In the grant, the traditional methods are noted, internal monitoring, surveys, focus group feedback, external eval. We will add pre and post tests, observations, and more. Deidre, could you please add regarding business advisory activity in our community? Um, so that was a question from Deidre. How are you, um, Donna, how are you gathering your data for uh, your consumers, um, monitoring them, and getting the statistical information that you required for the annual report. Do you have a, a software tool that you're using? No, I can't hear mm -hmm. anything. It's all written, okay. and I can't right. see it. And did Carol say anything further? Yeah, Carol states, we have done many activities over the years. Some of the best were interactive with clients and consumers. Coffee cafe and interviews and focus groups, for example. OK, good. Thank you, Carol. This. Question is for Mark Espino with Sequan Tribal VR program. Could you provide us with additional information regarding the process you used in including an external evaluator to come on site, 
uh, conduct the evaluation and how the external evaluators funding findings was used to improve or resolve any programmatic concerns or issues thank you it could be for anyone too. Mm -hmm. he's got a, a response right when you're asking the question mm -hmm. internal evaluation mechanisms include client satisfaction surveys uh, tedious and often get low response rate mm -hmm. utilization of reports from data management systems um, utilize data ops now using aware um, and also focus groups with uh, consumers uh, were effective mm -hmm. Carol saying our database system is critical for the annual report. Mm -hmm. Certainly beats counting on our fingers and toes <laughs> as when we were first funded 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very true. What I'd like to request from the more seasoned tribal VR directors, do you have any recommendation for Norma, Nora Normanton? Uh, I believe they're in their first year a program operation, uh, and this is in reference to the Lower Elwha Tribal Voc Rehab Program. Uh, Deidre says the BACs in the area are geared toward business and job development. I'm not sure yet how we will utilize these for evaluation purposes. Do you know I BACs? suppose that is why we are here. What it, say that again. What is a BA? Ask her what a BA. What is a BAC? Please, I know you, um, I love acronyms, but I need to know what they are first. I think it's a business business advisory, advisory council. council. Okay, and is that part of your tribe, or is it offered by um, someone in the community? I'm thinking of chamber of commerce or something of that nature. Mark responds uh, initially was identification of availability of funds in the budget. Next was evaluator contacting various programs and individuals to obtain a quote. Uh, scheduling an on-site visit was the best approach since it was since it had been some time since the program was not evaluated for many mm -hmm. years. Okay. Well, for any of you that have had an evaluation, how are you using that evaluation toward um, there are some things you're allowed to incorporate at the end of the year. You There are some things you're allowed to incorporate without the sanction of the Department of Education, but there are some things that you would want the sanction of RSA in order to improve your evaluation process. Is there anything that you've learned from the evaluation that you want to incorporate into your program? Or if you're writing a grant, how are you going to use that information to enhance your grant writing or your grant that you're writing? These are one of the reasons why we do evaluations is so that uh, we are, we're being accountable for one thing. But the other part is, what are we learning from the evaluation, and how are we implementing it in our program in a daily way with our staff? Are we having staff meetings every morning, everybody on the same page? Um, every time you observe a consumer, remember, that's the, that's the part that doesn't have numbers, right? That's the... What is it, Lee? What is it? <laughs> this is a quiz. There are two. <laughs> I'm waiting for an answer. Quantitative. And? Qualitative. All right, mm -hmm. there you go. <laughs> and how are they incorporated in summative and formative? Mm -hmm. Right? Where mm -hmm. do they, how do they fit in? And we use those words. Do they make any sense? Are you able to apply them in a practical way? I'm going to just move down and stay in Mark's uh, questions. Okay. Um, and then I'll come back to Deidre, Carol, and then Donna. Okay. But Mark is responding. He 
containing the eval included recommendations for documentation needs relating to allowable costs and personal aspects including recommending staffing pattern changes i.e. rural area representation mm -hmm. so I just wanted to stay on his on one his thing yeah um, and, and he says I was able to apply recommendations to strengthen his good integrity Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good job. Thank you for sharing. That's really important. And then I'll move back up to Deidre's conversation and her response, uh, I think, to the question prior was, uh, it is a community group uh, similar to her chambers. So the BAC. And then we'll move down to Carol. And she says, we use data ops reporting format directly answers the questions on the RSA report format. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having a database option is the first requirement for managing process and outcomes. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Donna follows up with, uh, we do an intake survey, which is on our website. We then do an assessment for each client during their venue uh, at entry and then at exit. Mm -hmm. Other Excellent. forms eval come right from our grant. They are divided into monetary, client, progress, and staff. I don't know. Uh, we would have to give you info today. Otherwise, I would have pulled more info and wrote ahead. Mm -hmm. so, Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's that's really good. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. That's good um, feedback. Carol says, I did the most extensive evaluation activities in years four and It's a great strategy to use. Yes, absolutely. And I think uh, Nora's coming in and she's saying um, Lower Elwa? Yes. Lower Elwa is in a small community. We expect to ask for and receive feedback from various external partners. The grapevine will travel fast and your <laughs> clients will be likely to be vocal in being a service recipient. We want to ensure that however we evaluate the intention well-defined as how we will interpret and use the results. Excellent. Good good planning, good thinking. What about those questions that you're asking? Are you also asking, you know, when you do your surveys, there are, there you have, you're looking at the quantitative because you're interested in, are you making an impact? Are you changing? Are you the change agent that you want to be in for your consumers and in the community? And that other piece then is, um, what are those numbers being used for? Don't forget to use, don't forget to use some part of it for the open-ended questions, so that you get a little of the warm fuzzies. You can tell, you have the importance of telling your story in two ways: statistically, and through the the consumer stories. You know what a huge impact that makes when you tell how you worked with somebody and walked with them, walked the walk of going from no employment for years and um, now they have a job and you and you and your staff has assisted them in some way. Uh, Carol states, uh, it is really difficult to find an external evaluator who is knowledgeable and Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there a way we can share documents with our community of practice? Can we do an interactive chat group mm -hmm. on this topic? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yes. Thank you, Carol. What do you have on that to respond right now regarding the interactive? Well, I'll say we'll follow up with our community of practice forum on our website. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll place that link inside there. And then when we follow up, COP with uh, main points in mm -hmm. our COP, we can always go there and interact back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. It would be a great opportunity for us to test that out to see if everyone's sort of talking back and forth mm -hmm. in our COP on abertag.org. Mm -hmm. So I'll go find that link and I'll put it over mm -hmm. here right now for people to come back. Is, is her question regarding the interactive engagement during the community of practice or is it a continuation after this? live community of practice. 
screen she's answering right now. We lost our screen. We lost the screen, but we have the oh, bigger one still. So. Uh, she's asking both during and after. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think the easy way right now, Carol, if you have something that you want to share, you can send it to me, and I'll put it up into Adobe, and I'll put a file share pod for everyone to do. Otherwise, the interactive back and forth would be on our uh, community of practice forum on our website, um, and it'd be great to um, uh, make that active and um, interactive. Um, Donna follows up with, I agree with Carol, uh, the minutia, our new grant, uh, the minute our new grant is funded, I've learned to start uh, a box of eval material for the next grant. This is part of the job that is not considered fun, uh, but necessary. <laughs> um, and Carol says, another effective strategy is success stories about individuals and also program components. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I was talking about in terms of that elaboration, the warm fuzzies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the areas that we have a special interest in, if you could share with us, do you receive feedback from RSA once you submit your annual performance report? And do they ever have a conversation with you regarding the particular type of program evaluation plan that you're using? Uh, we're interested in whether or not you receive feedback individually as a program or collectively at any particular type of setting, for example, KNAR conference or the monthly RSA conference calls with the program directors? Good point, Lee. <laughs> and uh, Carol says that the COP forum would be great. Uh, she'd like to follow up with, with Nora, for example. OK. All right, we have uh, multiple attendees typing. Good. We try to adjust the screen. Yes, it would be nice to know whether um, we we spend a lot of time making sure that we our staff that we and our staff are entering the data into a data source. And then we spend time gathering that information and creating the annual report. And it would be nice to know if, if you're receiving the feedback that you need in order to move forward. Um, one never knows if, if we are making a mistake or we'd like to be pat on the back if we're doing a great job. So feedback is important. Carol says, uh, annual reports, follow up not from RSA except the years that I forgot to push the button. <laughs> um, but they can see that it was done. OK. So there is nothing to say that, um, that your numbers are good or that you missed something. They would like you to elaborate on something. What about your financial departments? Are they able to provide you the information you need for the annual report? Basically, most of it should be in there if you have a good software program. You probably sh shouldn't need anything extra. I'm talking because I haven't heard from John. <laughs> Do we have anybody answering um, Lee's major question? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, what I just said for Carol Donna stated, no, this has never really happened except in a few cases. But with three staff down in the office, we haven't had much contact with 
RSA. Uh, and then Carol followed up with, uh, I was told that they love our project's success story, but that was in person, uh, personal contact at conferences and not formal. Um, and then Mark responds with very minimal from RSA outside of the peer review notes after the grant. RSA provides updates at the conferences, SAMA annual. Monthly RSA calls are scheduled with cancel rate uh, cancellation rate is about 60 to 70 percent on an annual basis. And then Carol says, My thought is no news is good news. I don't think they have the staff to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then uh, Donna uh, says, In the RSA office, they are three staff right now. Mm -hmm. Well, that does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that's right now, but tell me about any of you uh, veterans out there that have had it. Have you had any feedback prior to the current situation? Carol says, I would He'll like to you. know what. He'll, he'll tell you. <laughs> I would like to know what others are doing, other programs, that is, can we share? About evaluations? Was that the question? Um, yes, what others are, are doing, I guess, about evaluations, um, can we share? Oh, no, wait, Carol says performance reports. Okay. What other programs are doing? Is that the question? Uh -huh. So we're waiting for some answers. Do you want to talk about performance report versus evaluation, Lee? Or annual report? I'll answer that by um, sharing a little bit about the formative and summative evaluation that is often included in the tribal grant proposals. But before I go there, I want to also introduce um, the section in your grant proposal that describes your goals and objectives. Um, it's, it's my recommendation that as you're developing your goals and objectives, which should come from your magnitude of need, um, I recommend that you ask yourself, if I develop this goal and objectives, I would follow up with that by asking myself, how would I evaluate this? Also looking at your goals and objectives and uh, determining whether or not your goals and objectives are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, uh, and time oriented and selecting the right evaluation tool to determine or measure the outcome of your goals and objectives either on a quarterly basis, annual basis, and if your evaluation methods um, also include summative evaluation of your program while it's in progress, for example, your staff meetings regarding consumer progress being made, consumer satisfaction surveys being used and reviewed, uh, your meetings with the advisory committee, um, examples of summative evaluations is, for example, the annual performance report that you submit on an annual basis, also using an external evaluator coming in as you're wrapping up your five-year grant. Those are some examples to consider, but it's important to keep in mind that the evaluation tools that you are using or planning to use are thorough, appropriate to measure your proposed goals and objectives. Thank you, Lee. That really, that's helpful, having that. I'll, I'll move back in the chat a little mm -hmm. bit. Mark mm -hmm. says, I received a letter in 2013-ish indicating the need to address four content areas. The letter was signed by Dr. Finch. I think we're just moving back in the, mm -hmm. um, what, what from RSA. Uh, 
right. Mm -hmm. That was, yes. Thank you. Carol said, I have no idea how we look compared to other programs. Mm -hmm. if we meet our annual goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, there's no, for that's right, there's no form, there's nothing that comes out that says this is what, what all of you are doing. There's no, no report, overall report. Good point. And then uh, Carol's, uh, or I'm sorry, Nora says, perhaps off topic, but will RSA fill these positions or is there <laughs> a freeze? We've had ongoing challenges with RSA regarding responses to inquiries. Mm. Um, and then Donna comes and says, uh, in the early years, Dick Corbridge came to our project three times and Carol Baker once. They both had pages and pages of areas they gave us that we could improve and some of that were mandatory to be implemented. I would like to have that again. I remember some directors that were upset and called it babysitting. I felt it was valuable. Um, Carol says the key to have good information is have counselors who enter information into the database on a timely basis yes. and that it is accurate too. Um, and, and finally Donna says how did Dr. I think she's Mark. Uh, referencing mm -hmm. Mark's mm -hmm. uh, getting led. Mm -hmm. so. These are all um, your interests and your participation is valuable this morning. You've, you're opening up doors that are important to open and to explore. Um, Lee and I and the staff here at NAU, John, and all the people we have here working with us, really would like to be that support for you. Um, that is our goal. That's one of the reasons we're here this morning, <laughs> asking the questions and finding the areas that you feel you're swimming alone in your community. We don't want you to swim alone anymore. <laughs> We're also interested in hearing not just from the programs that are online right now, from, but from other programs, informing us what their experiences are regarding program evaluation. Um, do you feel there's a specific need for training in TA in completion of your annual performance report? We hear at KNR conferences that um, some of the programs find the either data ops or aware uh, case management software to be effective. And some are saying that um, due to the isolation, remoteness of the community, they're unable to, to access technology to its fullest um, potential. Mm -hmm. So that's an issue. Um, but certainly there are specific concerns, situations geographically, um, but, I, but we're interested in knowing whether or not um, there are specific recommendations you'd like to share with us regarding RSA stepping in and providing some of the training in TA as part of our efforts. Amanda Ray says, uh, fortunately, we've had a good working relationship with local ADBR mm -hmm. office, with the local ADBR mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. We invite the regional director over, sign a confidentiality statement, and she reviews a sample up to 10 of our cases each year for free. Oh, we've had nice. an old form uh, created by Dick Corbridge that we use for her to take notes and provide feedback. If anything, she has commented to share more cases so they can help with expenses. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Great um, source of uh, resources. Free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also want to share with the folks out there that here at the Institute for Human Development with our research, recent efforts in developing grant proposal in response to RSA RFP, is that in our efforts in conducting literature review, we, it is challenging to find current data regarding the tribal voc rehab 
programs. Um, we're interested in locating data regarding employment outcomes of tribal consumers. Um, there is no one location, uh, and, and that is still an issue. I believe um, collectively we need to present our concern regarding the data collection and distribution or dissemination of the information, not just with the current programs, but as well as with tribes that may be interested in uh, requesting for similar funding to serve tribal members with disabilities. Carol says there is a need for training evaluation activities within program resources. Ask her to account. Can you explain what you mean by that? What do you mean doable? That's something Carol is typing right now. Oh, Donna made a comment. Okay. Um, I'll say uh, Mark's reply to okay. Donna. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. I was newly hired, but I would assume it was a lack of utilization of budget as evidenced by large carryover amounts, a mm -hmm. uh, lack of achievement towards employment outcome of the parents. Mm -hmm. um, and then Carol stated before, uh, she's typing right now, but we have used the famous Dick Corbridge form too, uh, but not very regularly. We have had very little staff turnover. Donna states, I would like to, okay, well, Carol says, uh, a short client satisfaction survey that doesn't require a huge statistical report would be a doable evaluation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Carol. Um, Donna states, I would like to see a training on G5. To this day, there has never been a formal training on how to be through the system. We all had to guess and do trial and error. Most of us finally gave up and wrote the answers and faxed them. Uh, this defeats the purpose of G5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point, Donna. Thank you. Jim Allen states, uh, Nora and Deidre have dropped out of the session because the tribal network just went down. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm at the local work source, so I'm still here. Oh. So Jim's still on. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, we lost you. While you're typing, one of the things I would like to propose is we think about our advisory committee because they're made up of stakeholders and they are a wonderful resource for, the, for an evaluation. And they can also assist you in many ways. They do not have to, you do not have to meet with them once a month quarterly, or two times a year. You could meet with them once a year just before as your year is tying up, ending up, and then move forward for the new year with some of their, their ideas and be able to implement some things. And especially you'd want to have them when you're uh, approaching the time when you'll be writing a grant. So any of you had any successes um, with your advisory committee? You might want to share that with us as well, because it is another source of evaluation. Uh, Carol follows up with more uh, doable evaluations. Focus groups, interviews, and a coffee cafe, talking circles are not expensive. Techniques, easy, and information valuable and very rich. Um, and Tom states, uh, we also use our advisory committee for input and interviews, mm -hmm. client surveys, as well as In the ex I have a question for you. Do you have in the external evaluation, do you have a, a focus group with your stakeholders and a focus group with your consumers? Or is it just an evaluation of your program? Uh, in regards to that, Carol wrote right, uh, right after Tom, we had a great external evaluator in year four and five, Suzanne. Me. Uh, <laughs> Suzanne, I was here. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. 
Uh, <laughs> Mark says, I concur with Don that the TA we get from RSA is pretty much read the instructions, uh, for example, G5. There's a tutorial on G5, but no other system C mm -hmm. uh, available, seems available. Mm -hmm. um, and then Pam, we had a hard time getting an advisory committee. Mm -hmm. And then Tom answered your question, yes, we utilize both focus groups in the external evaluation. Excellent. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to make sure that you have, you're having dialogue and you're including that in your, uh, in the evaluation process. You want to hear from everyone. I want to make a comment regarding the program advisory committee. It is not a, a requirement to have an advisory committee as part of your program design. Uh, if you do choose to include a advisory committee, um, consider the resources that need to be allocated to facilitate um, the advisory committee. It will take time in providing the orientation, the education, the involvement, and having come on board, um, being on the same page with the program staff to understand their role um, in being a part of the advisory committee. Remember that they are in a at advising capacity. So they <clears throat> are limited in terms of uh, what they are um, directing the program staff or director to do. Um, it does take time to come up with a real good committee that is, that is active, that is engaged, that is committed to helping you out achieve your proposed goals and objective. But just keep in mind that having an advisory committee as part of your program design is not mandated by the funding agency. Thank you for clarifying that, Lee. And the, the reason for the proposal of the advisory committee, you could, you could call it anything. It could just be a gathering. It could be part of uh, in October when they have Disability Awareness Month you might want to bring a group of people in your office and chat mm -hmm. with them. Then you wouldn't be obligated to have it once a year under the title advisory committee. I think the main goal is to get feedback from your stakeholders. That is the primary thing that you really want to stay engaged with those stakeholders, whatever way you want to do it. I know Carol has, has a format um, that she uses that uh, it's a training tool where she brings the directors of the community and the state RSA into a forum and they she's had huge success with this particular forum. Um, Carol said, I don't think RSA is going to do any training. Uh, Sonia mm -hmm. is an expert, so we have asked and she is way overworked in my opinion. Uh, I just hope she does Amanda states, uh, our advisory council helped my former boss, Jackie Bisbee, create our existing policy and procedure manual. Mm -hmm. I have updated a few policies since with the help of uh, Winona and Michelle Wilson. Mm -hmm. uh, former boss suggested not to have the council after 2009, so I developed an annual external review by ADBR with existing consumer surveys one time a year. If a client uh, issue occurs, we gather action committee with client and their choice of folks to help resolve it. We also hand out CAP three times. So far, no disputes. Um, I meet with VRCs weekly to review cases in need. Peer reviewers thought we need more, however, scored us almost all of the program evaluation points this last grant year. Uh, Donna Excellent. states, uh, for the directors in the final year of your grant, we all become superhuman. <laughs> we write a new grant, enter it into G5, <laughs> then we have to do the five-year closeout on G5, then the final <laughs> fifth-year annual, annual performance report, then we have to do a six-month report. Yes. If we get funded, 
We are told several times that we have to do all this for continued funding. Many get overwhelmed and jump ship. In that last year, we are all on the tightrope on the Titanic. There mm -hmm. has to be a better way. There are many barriers and obstacles we have to overcome to help our disabled Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Bravo. Well said. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Carol says, our advisory committee got too big and hard to get together. So we started with work groups targeted on a certain topic. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, and have a short timeline of the focus. People like it because we are using their expertise and they feel like they are uh, contributing. The work group uh, has a beginning, a goal, and an end. Excellent. Um, and Amanda Ray said it was really hard to get all council members together even two times a year. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And I liked all of the different alternatives that <clears throat> you utilized in making up the difference when the advisory committee either became too large or was asked not to have any more. So um, I'm hearing a lot of creativity mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, passion and commitment, dedication. This is really, um, this is your shining moment. You're just really, you're doing an awesome job. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your experiences and sharing that with the other program directors or counselor, counselors that are online. We appreciate that. Um, one of the questions I, I'm throwing out is, do you feel there's a need for training in the TA in the development of an advisory council? Uh, how to form one, how to delegate responsibilities, how to engage them in the development of policy, how to help out with program evaluation, um, a process or procedure that is doable, and also taking into consideration uh, your staff resources and time commitment for this to become an effective part of your program. Carol states, just thinking this time last year, I was totally stressed in writing Fast and Furious. <laughs> but enjoying this spring, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we have about <clears throat> a little over 10 minutes remaining of this particular community of practice. Um, we'd like to know what you like us to focus on in the follow-up webinar on program evaluation, which will be conducted on May the 27th. Uh, 10 to 11 a.m. Arizona time. Also, going back to my earlier question, if there are any particular comments, questions that you have regarding our first webinar last week. Personally speaking, I'm also getting used to this um, technology in conversing with uh, the program people that are out there. Um, I'm just thinking of an article that I read uh, as we were preparing our grant proposal regarding the effect of technology in Indian country. Um, it certainly has an effect on our oral tradition in um, transferring knowledge among community members, conversing with our youth, uh, and it certainly um, affects me in terms of wondering what would be the most effective way that would be culturally res respectful, culturally responsive, in working with the with the different programs that are out there. Um, some of you may have heard that our TA Center will be doing a series of talking circles geographically with the programs. And that purpose is to determine the specific or particular training in TA needs that you may have. Um, for the remainder of this year one, ending September 30th, we will continue to facilitate 
the webinars on the seven priority content areas, the community of practice on the same content areas, as well as identifying programs who may benefit more from an on-site uh, personal approach in providing training in TA. Thank you, Lee. So uh, Joanna says, yes, uh, the training in all those areas will help me a lot. Um, Donna states, I would like to know if we are all going to be here. I was told there would be no competition next year and the next, and the next year after mm -hmm. due to due to the funding of programs for a sixth year and a seventh year. What is going to happen to those programs whose funding is up during those two years? Um, Mark stated uh, TA on the topic would be useful for newer directors. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Carol states, we often do an advisory committee. Uh, looks good on the grant, uh, mm -hmm. but we could use a future time to talk about an advisory why we want one, and what are some other options. Mm. Uh, Deidre says, I think a training on focus group, advisory groups, etc., would be a great idea. Um, and Carol states, the technology of a webinar is frustrating. I'm getting used to this one. When I first looked at the screen last week, I was not sure where to begin. We we're all mm -hmm. eager for contact with other programs. This will be an effective format. Great, great mm -hmm. observation. Good. Thank you. There's a question I wanted to respond to. Oh, the question uh, Donna posed in terms of will we all be here? Um, I was at the KNR conference, and I thought I heard Dr. Finch say that this would be the last year for, um, and I'll have to stand corrected on that, but that there wasn't going to be any. The, the extensions that they were going to be opening it up for the grant writing process again. I think what's happening is uh, the the funding. If there is if there are tribes that are still, if there are programs that still have high carryover, there is a process. I think what they're trying to do is get the money back into the pool so that they can open it up. But I think this is a really good question that you might want to pose on your director's conference with RSA. Um, having them once a month, I think that you have a, a lie, you have a concern, and I think it needs. To, I think you have every right to bring that question and have that question answered. So don't hesitate. Don't be too shy to ask the question because it's an important one. Amanda says, I think since there were two years of no cost extensions, there are no programs up for refunding. Um, oh, good point. Because that's what I thought Dr. Finch said, that there would be no more cost of it, uh, um, no more uh, extensions, that this, was, that this was the last year. And then Tom says, this format has worked well. The YouTube recording uh, was great as well. Mm -hmm. Oh. This is in response to Carol's comment. Um, so it's not a regular practice of having conference calls with RSA on a monthly basis. Uh, regarding the grant competition, it's my understanding uh, in reference to our meeting with Dr. Finch is that there would be no competition for the next two years. However, oh. he did not elaborate um, how existing programs will be uh, receiving continued funding. I don't know if it's a matter of um, program extension on an annual basis until they formally announce a grant competition. This is something that other programs are probably wondering about as well as interested tribes who would like to respond to the next RFP. Thank you for that clarification, Lee. I, I knew something was being addressed. <laughs> I lost, got lost in the terminology. <laughs> Thank you. Tom says we do have one scheduled for the 26th. 
Okay. And Carol states, I have not kept track, but it seems they are often canceled and not scheduled due to mm -hmm. uh, no staff available. Mm -hmm. Does that seem accurate? Mm -hmm. I've heard that also. One of the things that I also want to share with you is that for each community of practice, live community of practice, we will prepare a summary of the discussion, have it posted on our website for those programs who were unable to participate, as well as uh, for you to go back and review the notes or comments. Um, and if there's a need for any follow-up on the discussion, please do let us know. I just want to say before we continue, I'm putting the evaluation for the community of practice into the chat area. So um, if at any time any of the participants can go to that link and, and put their results inside there. Um, Carol Berkowitz says, thank you. Mekwich. Berkowitz. Mekwich. Mekwich. Berkowitz. B-E. No. Carol Berkowitz? Oh, it's somebody saying, different? Thank, oh. No, she's saying thank you. Oh, and, oh. And, oh, oh, mm -hmm. sorry. I can't see it, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need binoculars. <laughs> hey, this was wonderful. You did a, a wonderful job. Uh, I would encourage you all to applaud yourselves. You uh, provided some wonderful feedback, good questions, mm -hmm. good ideas, something we can really all be very proud mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Once we become more comfortable with this format of conversing, uh, I believe uh, we'll find a way to um, have a more engaging conversation as well as continuing the discussion beyond the limited time that we have for our community of practice. The discussion is important. Um, it's a good way of sharing your expertise with us, sharing your observations with us, and providing recommendations for other programs to consider as part of using a program evaluation that is viable, it's doable, um, and that not only the program directors can become involved in program evaluation, but everyone that is a part of the program will learn the importance of conducting program evaluations on a regular basis. And with that, we need, um, we would appreciate very much if you would answer the polling questions. And did you post something for yeah. an evaluation for us? John yeah. posted something mm -hmm. for our evaluation. Donna, we, made, Donna made a comment. Yeah. Yes. yeah, Tom says thank you for the opportunity to have the discussion. And then Donna says, future is no cost. It was level funding for the same grants. But where did the funding come from? No cost means you have it there and it hasn't been spent. Mm -hmm. Many grants were at zero dollars and got an amount level to the previous year or two years. I see. Mm -hmm. Good point. Thank you for the clarification. I'm just going to post the uh, link again so okay. that we can click on the link. Okay. And evaluate the COD. Okay. All right. Are there any last questions there, John, for us or comments? I think we, uh, we addressed all the questions. All right. Uh, we do have some people still typing. Okay. Amanda okay. says thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Amanda. Good job out there. Thank you for participating, Amanda. You had to get up early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be seeing you in August. And actually, do we want to maybe part of a polling question might be, should we move this to 11 o'clock in the morning, 11 to Arizona 12, time. so that Arizona time, so that we could, um, for Alaska, they're just, it's 8 o'clock, and it's like in the door at 8 and try to get on the uh, webinar, perhaps... Uh, would 11 be better? And it still would help those folks back east because it would be about 2 o'clock in Michigan and uh, Mississippi and New York, New York and, and New Jersey and Georgia, North Georgia, Carolina. Georgia, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. You're not saying it rightly. North Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, no, I'm going to be banned from that state, eh? <laughs> uh, Amanda says, good to see you again, Lee and Suzanne. Mm -hmm. It's uh, only 10 a.m. here right now. Oh, well. And August is great. Mm -hmm. um, it was 9 a.m. in Alaska. So oh, okay. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Yeah. All right, so we can keep 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Is that good then for everybody? Well, Carol says 11 is fine with me. Donna says 11 a.m. would be better. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, good. Chalet uh, says, mm -hmm. thank you all for this informative session. It was a great learning experience for me. All right. Thank you. You're it welcome. It was learning for us, too. Yes. We thank you. We teach each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Lee said this morning. Mm -hmm. We will be sending out another invitation and notice regarding the follow-up webinar on program evaluation and that is scheduled for May the 27th, 10 to 11 a.m. Arizona time. We look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, and have a good day. Deidre says thank you, everyone, for the information and participation. Anytime works for us, uh, same time zone. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody.